This video is presented to you by Neurospace, a company which is building the next generation of moon rovers and wants to take the opportunity to look back into the history of previous moon and Mars rovers. It is a story full of pioneering spirit, exploration and engineering miracles. Welcome to the video series, The History of Extraterrestrial Rovers. In the last episode, we covered the NASA mission Pathfinder, the first mission to bring a little rover named Sojourner to the Red Planet. And it lived up to its name, because what was to follow revolutionized planetary exploration. Two twin rovers would step into the footsteps of Sojourner. They were called Spirit and Opportunity, once again built by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And they not only brought us closer to Mars than ever before, both scientifically and also emotionally, they also became inspiring icons of space exploration. For the first time, high-resolution panorama images were sent back from the surface of Mars and could give us humans a glimpse of what it would really feel to stand on the surface of another planet. Spirit exceeded the expected lifetime of 90 souls, or Mars days, by a factor of 24.5 and opportunity, even by an incredible factor of 56.8, it survived for 14.5 Earth years. Spirit and Opportunity were two identical rovers. Neurospace is working on a concept in which many more robots in a swarm carry out work on the lunar surface. For example, they could build habitats or explore the surface. Since all rovers are based on the same standard, the individual rover costs are reduced significantly. The primary mission goals of the rovers were divided into four categories. 1. Determine whether life ever arose on Mars. 2. Characterize the climate on Mars. 3. Characterize the geology of Mars. 4. Prepare for human exploration. The engineers and scientists used heritage technology from the Pathfinder mission, such as the landing technique with airbags or the rocker boogie chassis, so in the episodes for Spirit and Opportunity, we don't want to focus on technology, but more on the story, the adventure these two rovers experienced, what they saw and discovered. Let's just have a brief look on the scientific equipment they carried with them. They had both stereo panorama cameras with 14 different color filters for color images and a microscopic camera for close-up images. This microscopic camera together with an alpha proton X-ray spectrometer, a Milsbauer spectrometer and a rock abrasion tool for brushing and grinding rock were mounted on a robotic arm to reach rocks and soil at desired areas and study them in detail. A miniature thermal emission spectrometer was used to identify minerals and learn about temperature properties of the Martian surface. Magnets mounted at different places on the rover collected magnetic dust and the wheels themselves were also used as a digging tool by rotating just one wheel. And now let's follow Spirit on its incredible journey of discovery on the Red Planet. After flying 480 million kilometers through space, bringing down its velocity to zero during so-called EDL, entry, descent and landing, also referred to as the seven minutes of terror, Spirit successfully landed on Mars on the 4th of January 2004. The landing site was on the floor of Gusev Crater, a crater with a diameter of 166 kilometers, which was chosen because scientists believed that it was once filled with water flowing through the canyon Maadim Valleys into the crater. Although the touchdown was 12 kilometers away from the targeted area, the mission was ready to begin. When Spirit opened its eyes for the first time, this is what it saw. The first mosaic image Spirit took was the highest resolution color image of the Martian surface. Here is a view towards southwest with a hill 7 to 8 kilometers away.
The view towards north showed a small depression called Sleepy Hollow with a diameter of 9 meters, which was only 12 meters away from the lander and because it looked very interesting to the scientists, it was chosen to be examined by the rover. In the east, there were seven hills at the horizon, about three kilometers away, which would become the main target for Spirit. They were named after the seven astronauts who died when Space Shuttle Columbia broke apart during re-entry about a year earlier in 2003. Anderson Hill, Brown Hill, Jala Hill, Clark Hill, Husband Hill, McCool Hill and Raymond Hill. When Spirit drove from the lander, it turned around and took an image of the lander itself, which was dubbed Columbia Memorial Station, as another tribute to the lost astronauts of Space Shuttle Columbia. This photo shows once again the ingenuity of us humans. There is this small piece of technology in this incredible wasteland, so incomprehensibly far away from its builders and it was only possible to get there through human creativity, the careful selection of suitable materials available in Earth's crust, the manufacturing of parts in the right shape out of these materials and the assembly of these parts by delicate hands which evolved over millions of years of evolution. Spirit could also take an image of marks left by the airbags in the soil a relict of its rough journey to its final position on the surface. The first rock, which was directly in front, was given the name Sashimi, but although it was so close, it was not examined by the scientific tools, because it was considered to be too dusty for the chemical analysis and had no flat surface for the rock grinding tool. So Spirit explored its surrounding until it found the football-sized rock Adirondack, which had no such disadvantages. So it became the first ever rock on Mars to be mechanically abraded. Minerals like olivine, plagioclase, pyroxene and magnetite were found, a common composition in volcanic basalt rocks on Earth. These minerals were later found to be abundant in the Gusev crater area. Adirondack seemed to have altered through the presence of thin films of water interacting with the rock and inducing mineralization processes. A clue for that was that it was easier to grind into a Adirondack than into similar rocks on Earth. Only one day after these extraordinary discoveries, Spirit suddenly developed an anomaly and rebooted over and over again without reacting to commands from Earth. The scientists determined that the error was in the flash memory, so they booted the rover without using the flash memory, which luckily was possible. Once Spirit had come to life again, they deleted some unneeded files which caused problems and formatted the flash memory. After this process, the rover was fully operational again and the adventure could continue. Next on the list of rocks to examine was the rock Humphrey, where again a rock abrasion took place at several spots and once again minerals crystallized from water were found. After examining the rock Matsatsal, which differed mineralogically from Humphrey, Spirit started its journey towards Bonneville Crater, a crater with a diameter of 200 meters, about 300 meters northeast of Columbia Memorial Station. About halfway, Spirit took this image looking backwards and saying goodbye to the lander. Upon reaching Bonneville Crater, this panorama image was taken on which even the ejected heat shield of the re-entry capsule can be seen on the other side. Along Bonneville's southwest rim, Spirit found an interesting drift dubbed Serpent, where it used the spinning of only one wheel to dig a trench into it and study the material with a microscopic camera. The grain size was about four times smaller than the on average 200 micrometer sized sand beach grains on Earth, which are able to form dunes. Particles of the size in the serpent drift are more like dust or silt and wouldn't form dunes on Earth. Simulations on Earth using the small grain sizes and wind speeds and atmospheric density of Mars could not recreate the drifts. But scientists are certain that the lower gravity of Mars, which couldn't be simulated, is the missing factor. After Spirit had explored the rim of Bonneville Crater, it started its long 3 km drive 
looked towards the Columbia Hills in the distance, for which it needed about 90 Earth days. On its way, it passed by 163 meter wide Missoula Crater, and 90 meter wide Lahontan Crater. At the foot of the hills, an interesting rock dubbed Pot of Gold was found, where hematite was detected for the first time. Next was a place called Hang's Hollow, where bright sparkly dust-like material was exposed when the topsoil in this region was disturbed. Around this time, the engineers realized that Spirit's front right wheel motor was drawing more and more current. The reason was unknown and it could not be fixed, so this wheel was only used with pull power during steep climbs. Later, it was decided to drive Spirit backwards to help reduce the power consumption of this wheel. The show went on and Spirit reached an outcrop called Clovis Rock in which the deepest hole drilled into a Mars rock up to this point was performed, 9 mm deep. This was due to the rock being softer than the surrounding volcanic rocks. Higher levels of sulfur, bromine, chlorine and geotite than in previously studied rocks were found. The terrain got steeper and steeper when Spirit made its way up Husband Hill, but it kept going and found the rocks Tattel, Uchben, Ebenezer and Lutefisk. The rover reached a spot known as West Spur, a place where future Martian hoteliers would definitely build a hotel. Here, Spirit had a beautiful view down the hill into Gusev Crater. This panorama image with the name Cahokia was taken there. The dark patch of soil on the right was the place Spirit stopped for engineering work on its right front wheel. The tracks can be followed all the way back to where Spirit came from. Imagine watching the Martian sunset from up there, with your own eyes, and then even seeing your home, Earth, shining as a tiny pale dot in the sky, where everything is you ever knew. It would certainly be life-changing. This moment, in all its silence, would create every emotion at once. The feeling of being alive, curiosity, gratitude, a feeling of peace, satisfaction, a feeling of enlightenment, but at the same time a feeling of solitude, meaninglessness, desire, disbelief or even a slight fear. I think for a brief moment you would just be one with human nature and feel connected to the universe more than ever before. <laughs>